Wait, what was that? Can you say it one more time? I said, can you hear me? Oh, okay. No, you forgot one part. You said, can you hear me? And then you start using a bunch of racial slurs. You said you said certain words like the C word and the S word and the P word for some reason. Can you and reiterate what those words are? I don't know what C word is. No, I heard you say them, Fernie. I feel like you're trying to not take responsibility for your actions. No, I mean, I just want it to be perfectly clear. I, I just want you to say what you had said earlier, Fernie. I just want you to be perfectly clear with what you're trying to imply. Okay. Well, here's what I'm trying to apply. Jeff, right here, who's right next to me from HR, he's here you to your monitor. your butt boy? Jeff here from your HR. Your butt boy? Call him he's, butt boy Jeff. Jeff, hey. Jeff, he's calling you a butt boy. What are you going to do about it, Jeff? Are you, are you going to write him up for once? Why does he look like Channing Tatum and this is the end? <laughs> what do they call him? Channing Tate Yum? Yeah, it's Channing Tate Yum. Oh, can GI Joe's in love with me? Uh, so we're starting off this podcast on a good note. Um, God damn it. Freddie, you want to introduce us the official introduction, I guess? Hey, everybody. This is Fernando from the Rollback Podcast. And today we are reviewing, personally, one of my favorite football movies. The Replacements came out in 2000, starring Keanu Reeves. You know, I'll be honest with you, man. I didn't know about this movie until like maybe five years ago. I had never seen it. It was never on my radar. It was like a forgotten really? movie. That was it one was of the a- best quotes ever. No, but it was like a forgotten movie. Like I had never heard about it. I watched it randomly on like TBS. I was like, this is good. So I uh-huh. found like the, the real version online, torrented it. Watched the whole thing and I cried laughing. Found the real version online, illegally downloaded it, (laughs) and then you know, and sue me, fucking sue me. I dare them. Please don't. Uh, But that said, fuck this movie. This this movie's like a knight's tale. Like it should not have worked, but it did. Pain heals. Chicks dig scars. Glory lasts forever. Fucking one of the. You're right. One of the best quotes ever. Um, but also I learned something, folks. Uh, y'all are gonna learn something as we talk about this movie. This is based on a true story for any loosely, uh, but yeah, loosely, but yeah, yeah, loosely based on the nineteen eighty seven eighty seven uh, Washington Redskins when the NFL went on strike. Like and and uh, I, we're gonna be talking about the movie mostly, but as far as the strike is concerned, Fernie, what's the name of the the thirty for thirty? um year of the scab dude i i watched it also to prep for this because i saw this movie maybe uh, like two weeks ago mm-hmm. um so i watched the the documentary and dude the shit that happened to these guys like oh yeah man. they got shafted bad but i mean you could look at it one of two ways one um the players unionizing isn't bad because they were fighting for what they felt was right And but you can't blame the replacement players because these guys have always had a dream of playing in the NFL. And if they have that dream available to them, who isn't going to take that dream? Um, one and when the in the documentary in the 30 for 30, one of the guys says the best. It's like, look, I'm pro union, but it's not like we were taking the jobs of a bunch of plumbers or construction workers. Like, this is the NFL. Like, this is a, a pro football sport. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all fair and love is war. Yeah. Um, All right, so the replacement's loosely based on the NFL strike. Movie starts off with, uh, obviously, the entire football league going on strike. The Washington Sentinels, which is a badass name the NFL should have stolen. Um, They go on strike. Uh, O'Neal calls the greatest coach, maybe the greatest coach in movie history, Gene Hackman, to assemble a team. Yep, he assembles this uh, team that he's had his eyes on for some reason, like always. <laughs> Kept tabs on them. Brings in uh, Keanu Reeves as quarterback. Uh, he was a famed college quarterback. Lost in the Sugar Bowl? I want to say that was the game he lost. Yeah, he got murdered, and then he got drafted, but apparently they put too much pressure on him. Like, yeah. His freshman year. Yeah. So he he washed out. He's like washing boats. Like that's his job. Um, we have uh Favreau, John Favreau, 
playing middle linebacker, Mike linebacker. He plays an absolute insane cop. Which just <laughs> knocks his shit out of everybody. Um, you give me the ball. I'm going to get you the ball. You're going to give me the ball. I want to give you the ball. All right, go sit and down. And then they just stop. <laughs> and then we got one of the best, worst wide receivers ever in Orlando Jones. Oh, yeah, Orlando Jones. I think it was like four <laughs> years removed from uh, before he did a drumline and he plays the band director. That's r- oh my god, I couldn't place him. You're right. No, this is drumline, uh... also an underrated movie that probably saved band in schools. You think so? I think so. Band, dude, band school, uh, band in school still sucks. I still think if it, it oh, because everyone it, wants to be the drum player, right? That's right. Yeah, that's well, it right. came out right before we went into middle school. That's right. And I wanted to do percussion because of drumline. I forgot you. And I, <laughs> all the spots were taken. Dude, they didn't even let people try out for them. Like once the spots were taken up, no. But here's a tuba. Oh yeah, you had a tuba. What a fucking loser. I do. I tried to quit after my first year. My mom, my mom, I hate it. No, 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 no. I was going to quit. And then my mom made me stay because host Edler talked her into it. Like, well, no, he should really try to commit. You know, he needs to learn. Fuck you, man. Didn't you I do didn't choir? Huh? Didn't you do choir? No. Oh. I did too, you jackass. I think you did choir. Bullshit. I think he did the first, because uh, sixth grade, there was no wood shop. No. So you had to do either orchestra, uh, band, or choir. No. I think he did. I think he did <laughs> choir. Folks, we will confirm that at a later date. Um, Jesus, I did not know that. Okay. But so, yes, this movie, I didn't even know it came out in 2000. I thought it was a 90s movie. It feels like a 90s movie. Yeah, it has yeah. that 90s feel. Um. Shockingly, it was a box office bomb, but we'll get to that later. Um, really? Yeah, so the budget, according to this, was 50 mil, and it only grossed 50 mil at the box office. Mm. Um, I mean, I got to assume, including marketing expenses, they probably lost money on this one. But, I mean, I think it, I think it's a cult, it has a cult following, I have to assume. This is, what, a year after uh, The Matrix? Nah, like, what, three years? No. Didn't The Matrix come out, come out in 97? I thought it came out in 97. Did it? Uh, we're about to find out. Uh, the, the, the Matrix 99. I was wrong. 99, yeah. This is one year removed from the Matrix. You thought I thought it would have a big uh, a bigger uh sell because of uh because of Keanu and how good he was in the Matrix. I mean, maybe the just the thought of a movie about a bunch of replacement players was too weird of a concept. Maybe. I mean, it, whoever didn't watch this in theaters, though, was an asshole because this movie's pretty good. Um, so the coach, Jimmy, assembles this team of... Jimmy McGinty? Jimmy McGinty assembles this team of... Ragtag. Misfit. Washouts. Like, like nobodies. They have no business being a professional football team. Um, in theory, though, it's kind of brilliant Like when he brings on the sumo guy as an offensive lineman. Yeah. Like makes sense, pushing people around. See, I wonder if someone were to spend a stupid amount of money to assemble the best football team using non-American players. I wonder if they could beat an American football team. Uh, I mean that's tough because it's not like basketball where basketball is a universal sport. It's I mean American football is pretty much isolated in the United States. Is how expensive it is to play and how like easy it is to die playing it. I'm not not playing any sport. I mean, come on, football is a little. And I love football. I'm not trying to. No, I know. But But like the thing that I don't understand is why football gets so much flack when it's like, why aren't y'all doing this with boxing? They literally punch each other in the head, and they used to call it punch drunk. No, it was CTE. I forgot about that. I oh, mean, he's I, just a little punchy, you know. He's punch he's fine. 
Man, you know, that's fair. I don't know why they don't come down on boxing as much. Maybe exactly. football gets all his hate, but I guess it's because kids play it. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. We all know the risks. Don't act like, what? Banging my head against another person's head isn't smart? Okay, I'm going to call bullshit on one thing, though. The fact that the NFL was saying, like, oh, we didn't know about concussions were a thing. Bull- so you're telling me I can take this hammer to your skull, hit you like five times, and you're going to be fine? What? Trauma to the head's a bad thing. So concussions are bad. To be fair, everyone should know that banging your head against another person is probably <laughs> not the best thing for your brain. But don't have the balls to deny it. Like, okay, it's one thing for it to but be But everyone true. denied it. Everyone denied it. Even people that love the game, they denied it. Everyone they're wants, stupid. To, act, they're everyone they're stupid. wants to act like, like banging or going full speed and tackling the shit out of somebody isn't going to hurt you in the long run. No, it is. You just, no one wants to say anything because everyone loves watching it. You're not wrong. I, I, no one wants love. to be the guy that ends the party. <laughs> oh god do well, i mean will the party end? you know what that's a topic for another day um by the this way, was folks, back when football was football <laughs> hit people okay look i agree with them protecting the players more but like they, they, okay apparently they're considering um revisiting a rule where you can't drop on a player like the thing that broke uh, pollard's ankle what? Why? Like, there's only so much control a defensive player can have when he hits somebody. Look, see, people like to rag on Brady, like if he was playing through this, through this entire movement, because Trent Dilfer came out on an interview saying, "I love Brady, I love Rodgers, but today's game doesn't impress me." You're acting like Brady didn't get drafted in the year 2000 and played pretty rough guys. From 2000 to 2010. I'm, I'm going to be real with you, man. That 2000 to 2010 is nothing to joke about, but it ain't the 70s. It isn't the 70s. But it also, those 70s players wouldn't last today. It's evolution. The game's faster. Watt, JJ Watt, you put JJ, a prime JJ Watt in the 70s? He's murdering <laughs> quarterbacks. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. players, granted, they're pampered a lot compared to the 70s players. Today's players are genetically built <laughs> different than those <laughs> 70s players. They're bigger. They're stronger. They're faster. Linemen, offensive linemen, are running four sixes, four sevens. <laughs> I don't think other one of us could do that right now. No, these guys are <laughs> weighing 300 pounds, running four, almost four eights in a 40 yard dash. Those 70s players wouldn't last today. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, oh God, I would. But they act like, they act like, like it was so like tough. Oh, I'm sorry we implemented a rule that the defensive back can't beat the shit out of the receiver at the line of scrimmage and keep him there. Sorry. Sorry we made a five-yard rule. My bad. Oh, oh my. you can't decapitate the quarterback either. No. Don't slam him. Oh, my. We should, uh <laughs> oh 70s players can eat shit <laughs> oh god i god i don't know what the See, only players i think can last now mm-hmm. were the 90s players well yeah but again that that's going to what you were saying about evolution they were closer to the speed now yeah but we look at the game probably in like 2040 those 90s players ain't gonna be shit yeah but yes back to the movie we're getting way off topic so as um, you can tell fernie likes football as you can tell um, this is this was your the, a lot of these times these are movies that you've never seen or religiously watched. What did you think about this movie? I fucking loved it. Like from from the beginning onward, like Keanu Reeves is such a likable guy, such a likable character. This movie doesn't work if he's not likable. 
Like, I think he has a very good talent of kind of meshing himself into roles. It's not really. He, it's not really something that you see like that he does a bad like job at assimilating to a role. Well, it's like Tom. It, he has the Tom Hanks effect. Like you just like the guy, and any character he yeah. takes on is just a different version of. Here we have football, Keanu Reeves. Then yeah. we have gun assassin Keanu Reeves, and then we have Jesus Keanu Reeves. Like and we have uh, Bill and Ted Keanu Reeves. We have Evil Ninja Keanu Reeves. That's a, one of most. We people. have Keanu Reeves playing Keanu Reeves in that Netflix movie. Oh yeah, uh, my maybe or something yeah, like be that, my, maybe. Uh, always be my maybe. Yeah, I, you know, for rom coms, it's actually pretty decent. Hmm. Um, I never saw it. I just saw that one part where Kika walks out. It turns out the girl's dating him, and I'm like, dude, you lost. Just walk away. Yeah. You 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 will not beat Keanu Reeves. I'm sorry. They, there's no version of this where you win. Um, and then they even made a song. What do you mean? There's a song. I kick I kick Keanu Reeves' ass. What? It's on Spotify. It's from the movie. It I plays to, at the end of the movie. I have to listen. I've never seen that movie. You should watch it. It's actually a pretty decent rom com. See, uh, rom coms are so hard to see, find nowadays. Oh, if it's a good one, I'll watch it. It's just, dude, nowadays all the rom coms are just like take two attractive people, boom, make a comedy. It's like, no, yeah. they gotta have chemistry, they gotta work, they gotta be good. Yeah, I watched How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days for the first time. Fucking hilarious! It still yeah. hits. McConaughey was king of uh, rom coms. Rom- but the thing is, is like they gelled, like it worked. It was such a weird premise, but it worked. Yeah. Nowadays, fucking what the kissing booth? Come on, man! Oh, that fucking movie is trash. Darian loves it. I think it's garbage. See, I want to be clear. Nikki and her friends, like I, we were all hung- hanging out. They watched it, and I legit fell asleep maybe like twenty minutes in. And then when I woke up, I was just shit talking the whole time. Why do they just start laughing in the middle of a scene to transition? Like I, <laughs> and then boom to the next scene, like for no fucking reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, let's talk about a good movie. So, like the replacements, exactly. So, like, dude, this movie was fucking out of nowhere, but it was so good. All the characters are like, well, and they all have such distinct personalities. You got the I'm not I don't want to call them the Doubleman twins, but let's be real, Doubleman twins. Uh, the Who, who's that? Eddie? I'm. Let me find them real quick. Give me one second. No, here. why do you call them that? Because they look like best friends. No, they look. I don't think that's why. <laughs> there were offensive there a and defensive. You're calling him this? Offensive guard and wait, hold on, hold on let me see. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Brady. <laughs> One of them is Phase Love. I can tell you that right now. I'm trying to follow Phase Love and Michael. I don't know. Yeah, he's the guard. Okay, Michael Telly Ferro, Ferro, Ferro. I can't oh. pronounce it. I just wait. know Phase Love. But either way, uh, the guards, like those, those two guys are fucking hilarious. Like in the middle of the club, I don't want to watch this guy football. I'm a son of a bitch. I'm a son of a bitch. Oh, bah, bah. Son, <laughs> oh man. Hey, but football? Flip. Football. We can football. play football. 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 Yeah. Oh, man. No. Flip my man. Flip my quarterback's car back over. <laughs> What's going on? Um, Oh, put some eye down on that shit. What was it? But yeah, all that shit was pretty true. Like, you know how they were like picketing in front of like the stadium uh, while the replacement players arrived. Yeah, yeah. They, the actual NFL players were doing that. Oh, they're they breaking throwing, windows. They're they were throwing the bus. shit at uh at the bus. Like, oh yeah, no, they they're were, fucking. That did happen. Um, no, and then they're trying to assemble this random ass team of. And again, it's weird because it kind of makes sense. Like the kicker, for example, he's a he's a soccer player from England. I'm wary. <laughs> I'm wiry, wire, wiry. Um, and we have what uh, offensive tackle, Ace Yam Yonami, he, the 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 sumo wrestler, the sumo wrestler, dude, the deaf tight end, the de- Oh, that's right, David ne- Deneman from uh the Office. Oh my god, he's oh my god, I did not recognize him. Yeah, back when he was skinny and you know, not fat. Not a drunk. Yeah. 
That's not fair. It kind of is, though. Uh, let me see. Run. Oh, my God. Troy Winvers. He plays uh, the running back, the ordained minister. Yeah. Doesn't he, like, break his leg or something at, in the last game? Yeah. Oh, his that's knee, right. He tears his knee up. Yeah, not a better way to go out, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he scores a touchdown and he tears his knee. Oh, man, that's got to suck. Who's... Who's the one that went to jail? Oh, fun fact. Apparently, well, for I don't know if you want to say the fun fact. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, in the actual story of the 1987 Redskins replacement players, uh, in the movie, there is a safety. I think they call him, like, John Smith on the field. Ray Smith. Yeah. At Ray Smith. And um, he's a prisoner. Like, they let him out of prison to play football. And in real life, it wasn't. A safety. It was the quarterback, a black quarterback. Can't remember the name though. Oh, God, Taylor. I want to say his name, but I might be wrong. Uh, da, da, da. Washington Redskins offseason roster. Uh, Tony see. Robinson. Ed. Uh, Ed Rupert. I think. No. No, it was Tony Robinson. Oh, yeah, Tony Robinson. Uh, they let him out of jail uh, to play for the Redskins. Um, and in that story, like this one, uh, when the the two sides had already made peace and they played their last game, he went back to prison to go uh, finish his sentence. Four years and ten months. Yep. Jesus. Um, Imagine going back to prison... And watching the team that you played for win the Super Bowl? I I mean, he was just in the documentary. He was the only one placing bets on the Redskins to win. And when the Redskins won, he said like, everyone was mighty quiet that night. And he was happy and proud. Um, mm -hmm. Man, I cannot imagine that. Jesus, three weeks, three very short weeks of playing professional football. I can't. I can't and then imagine. having to go back and... To a prison, not even to a normal job. To no, prison, prison. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I mean um, that's that is the crazy thing about this story. Um, and even the movie, like the movie itself, like does bring a lot of humor to it. Like when they bring him into the stadium, uh, <laughs> the, he releases him. They release him to the coach, and he's like, uh, "Let's uh, <laughs> let's go this way where there's a." Cameras and witnesses. Cameras and witnesses. <laughs> um, so after practice, the team struggles against a uh, Detroit team. Uh, the replacements, and they'll be get their asses whooped. They lose, uh, fall short by one touchdown. Uh, the coach gives Flacco shit, saying, uh, great quote, winners always want the ball when the game's on the line. Uh, afterwards, you know, the whole team's at a bar, kind of licking their wounds. The douchebag professional players show up. They get into a brawl. And it's a big team-building exercise. Oh, yeah. Probably the best use of the song, I Will Survive. And Definitely. the best dance number, too, I Will Survive, in a prison. I Well, I worked in a prison. I wouldn't say that. No one danced I Will Survive in prison? No, they they did, actually. There was a cheer team. Uh, uh and so block no i'm pod uh g pod here at lopez they had a dance team they weren't very good but man that they tried their best <laughs> <laughs> you suck <laughs> <laughs> um but then shane i i think like at that point the fact that Shane was willing to stand up for his teammates or his teammates first i was afraid i was petrified you're petrified that i can never live without you by my side and they start dancing. Yeah. I will say it's probably. I think I'm surprised that dance number isn't mimicked more. I think if this movie were to come out today, it would definitely be a meme. Like there'd be TikToks all over about it. I'm surprised it's not a fucking touchdown celebration. <laughs> oh well, the No Fun League won't let them. No, yeah, they do. Remember when they lightened the load on uh, touchdown celebrations? Have they met? I don't remember yes. the last time I saw a good one. Well, I mean, because to us, they're not good. But they've done, they're doing dances. They've done choreographed shit in the end zone like the past two or three years. 
Huh, I gotta notice that. That or maybe they don't cut to it. I always wanted to do the gun one. Oh, yeah, you can't do that one anymore. <laughs> I mean... Can't it do was that the one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks for feeling the vibe, Eddie. You're welcome. No pun intended. <laughs> um... <laughs> So the the day after they get out of jail and camaraderie has been established, Shane is clearly the leader. There's actually a big, uh, let's say, emotional moment, but kind of like a realization. Um, they have, I guess, they call it chalk talk, whatever. Um, Gene Hackman assembles the team and asks, "What are you afraid of?" And they give out. Oh, our... yeah the the quicksand. Yeah. The quicksand one. Yeah. Um, and you know they, you know, you're afraid no matter what you do, you're gonna drown and drown and drown. Afraid of going back to the lumber yard, the you know, the corner store, prison. Amen. The, you know, the boat, the boat yard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he he gives a really, I never really thought about it until I saw it. I was like, that's actually interesting. Um, Gene tells him, "You've been given something every athlete dreams of." A second, a second chance. chance and you're afraid to blow it um and for any i mean you as a former uh student athlete much more than me uh you actually played four years of football mm -hmm. um would you agree like if you could go back restart your ninth grade with all the knowledge you have now would you do it again uh i mean with all the knowledge i had now i mean i would try i mean if I could, like, knowing what I know about nutrition, exercise, everything like that, I mean, yeah, I, would, I think everyone, anyone would give it a shot. Because back then, it was pretty much Wild Wild West. You just did whatever the coaches told you, and you trusted their knowledge. Hmm. Wait, do you feel like you were misled when you were in high school, or what? Uh, not misled. I think it was lacking information. I mean, when they taught us to exercise, it was like the bare minimum. It wasn't really in depth i mean or recovery like recovery was hardly a thing they would have us come in on saturdays after games to lift i remember that's right you had 10 y'all had what 8 a.m workouts the following yeah day? on saturday mornings after games we would come in to lift they said it was light lifting but it's like most of us were banged up or tired and you had us come in and fucking lift <laughs> I'm like how the fuck are we supposed to recover i wonder if that's more of a paycheck thing because don't don't they get paid extra for showing up on saturdays i have no clue i wouldn't be surprised um but anyway so next game they're able to bullshit their way into a win with a 65 yard field goal by the by their welsh kicker the leg the leg he's smoking on the field and Matt, john madden says i think he's smoking Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot John Madden was in this movie. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, um, and his partner, yeah, they were in the movie. Um, yeah, uh, they. How many games did they win? They won. They played four games. They had to win three. Oh yeah, and they win the three, uh, yeah. which is how it played out in real life. Um, the replacement players lost one game, and they won three. And um, they don't ever say what happens at the end of this movie. Um, but in the actual story, after they win the three games, uh, the actual players come back. They win out the rest of the season. And then they go to, and to the playoffs and win in the Super Bowl. It is very largely speculated that if those replacement players didn't win those games... They probably wouldn't have gone to the Super Bowl or the playoffs. No, they pretty much set them up to for success. Well, also yeah. in, in the documentary, they even mentioned how the Washington team was really beat up. So getting off for a month, you know, the team really recovered and they were yeah. healthier than most other NFL teams going to the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, uh, this movie, um, after they go on a two game winning streak, the quarterback of the Washington Sentinels uh, decides to come back, which thus leaves Falco out of a job. And it's really a dumb decision <laughs> by the owner who's like, that's Jerry Jones. Like, let me put 
the guy that everyone thinks is a dill hole with the guys that hate him. Look, man, I I I I recognize I'm a Cowboys fan, diehard Cowboys fan. That dipshit was Jerry Jones. Sticking his nose, overexerting his power. Oh, yeah. Am yeah, because that was just really dumb. Getting rid of the hot hand. No one ever gets rid of the hot hand quarterback. Ever. When the quarterback is hot, you don't take him off the fire. The only time, the only time that ever, that I can think of ever worked is when Brock Osweiler got benched for Peyton Manning, which I don't think he should have. And they still won the Super Bowl. That's right. Manning got beat up that year, right? That was his Manning retirement. was trash, garbage that year. No, he got his defense carried him to the Super Bowl and won yeah. that game. I, I was if happy for him. He walked away with the ring. If it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for the defense, he would have fucking been trash. Like that would have been the conversation. No one ever talks about how shitty Peyton Manning was that last year. No. They only talk about man, Matt. For all the elevation that Manning and Rogers get, they only got three rings between them. Yeah, and Brady's got six, oh seven, seven rings. Oh my God! Yes, he is the goat. Jesus Christ! Look, no, person... well, I'm not saying that to say he's the goat. I'm just saying like people love to throw Aaron Rodgers into the goat conversation. While I'm like. Has he proved anything? He's been with the same team. He's supposedly the leader of that team, and yet he's choked in big moments. You know, um, I was a skip, not skip, maybe it was Skip Bayless. I, I think it was him that said this. Uh, when they were asking him about his contract extension with the Packers, or like what he thinks he can do, and he said, I think I've got one or two more MVP runs in me. He didn't oh, talk yeah. about Super Bowls. It was it was out of context because they were asking him about MVPs. Like Gronk had asked him about MVPs. Oh, okay. I was under the impression they had asked him like about possible team accomplishments, and he was like, "I think I got another MVP or two in there." No, they had asked him. To be fair, they did ask him that. So I will I will give him that. Like that is one of those sound bites that you kind of take out of huh. context. Okay, I learned something, folks. In case so you can't I'll, tell, Fernie knows more, but. Yeah, like it back to the movie. Yeah, like you never take the quarterback who's hot out of the game. So they take out Falco, they put in this dipshit that no one likes, and he just kind of shits all over him because he's like, I'm a professional player, blah 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 blah. You have to defend me, blah 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 blah. And it ends up not working out for him at all. No, well, they play the Dallas game and they get the shit kicked out of them. They're down seventeen, nothing at the half. And Martel in the movie, the Dallas everyone. team, I think, had already gotten all their players back. Yeah, they said most of the players already crossed the picket line. Yeah, so they're playing a fully strength pro Dallas team at this point in the movie, and yeah, they're getting they're getting their ass whooped because their quarterback sucks. They have no team unity without Falco. Um, and Falco's what? He's listening to the game, right? He's watching the game on his boat. It's a sick boat. And uh, who doesn't want to live on the ocean? Not me, motherfucker. Not me. Hurricanes, <laughs> sharks, piranhas. So, <laughs> so yeah, Falco's <laughs> watching the game and he's like, you know what? Fuck it. And he takes his truck he drives over to the stadium i'm pretty sure the security guards see him and i'm like and are like just get in dude we need you you know i think that's the only thing of this movie that bugged me the whole time not like a hardcore bug just mean like being like bullshit it's a 15 minute break how the fuck did he get from his boat all the way to the stadium get dressed get ready and go in out there DC. in 15 minutes. Yeah, that's the only time I'm going to call bullshit in this whole film of replacement players. How the fuck did you get there so fast? Because they even show he sees the, the, the interview. Dude, he's fucking Neo, man. He flew there. That would explain a lot, actually. What if all of his Counter Reeves movies are just Neo having a different adventure? Yeah, maybe it is. 
Oh man, are we? So, in the yeah, he gets there. The quarterback at this point had just pulled a bullshit move of like he re- they had like a minute left, and like I think he kneeled. And no, he 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 uh, slid. I think. Oh yeah, he slid. He burned out the clock. It's like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? We're down. We had like a minute left, and you're sliding. It's like, yeah, like he burns the team. The team wants to kill him at this point. And yeah. uh, so they go into the locker room. Falco shows up. They kick his ass out of there. And then Falco's back in the game. Yeah. And uh, they fucking rally. They come back uh, by with 14 points. Dallas doesn't score anything. Well, let's talk about the first play when he comes back. I'm trying to remember that what's the first play when he comes back. When they beat the shit out of every Dallas player on the field. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot about that to reestablish dominance. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> fuck this. First play, we're just beating the fuck out of everybody here. <laughs> so first play, hunt, linemen go after linemen. Falco, I think, drop kicks the linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> off the fucking wall but great but yeah like everyone kicks a shot everybody just kind of pretty much say like we're back <laughs> great scene. i love that scene that's one of my favorite scenes <laughs> um remind me doesn't so okay i know the um i know the pastor scores a touchdown doesn't john favreau go on offense for a bit uh i think Think he, yeah, he does. He escorts um, Ray. Ray Smith. Yeah. yeah, he's like, come on, man, he's going to jail. <laughs> he escorts him to a touchdown. Yeah, they become buddies. Yeah, uh, I, I like that. I like those little moments. Yeah, um, black and white coming together. I have no joke for that that I can say on this air, so I'm not gonna say it. Um, well, you make these joke all the time, Daddy. Shh. With your you with your friends with the funny white hoods. Hey, Fernie, you see this cub? Take a shut the fuck up. All right? You're done. Now. Is that a white only cup? I fucking hate you. <laughs> My last name is Luna, you piece of shit. <laughs> uh, that said, we come down to the last drive of the game. Fuck you. We come down to the last drive of the game. Falco calls for a deep pass. Give oh, the wait. greatest quote ever. Wait, wait, wait. You no. guys are tired. I I know like this is time for something inspirational, but that wouldn't be our style. Pain heals, chicks dig scars, glory lasts forever. Gentlemen, it's been an honor to feel to share the field of battle. Oh right? like uh you fucking corny bitch. But <laughs> God, is that a great scene? <laughs> I think that's one of my favorite barstool shirts that they have. I man, I need to order that, and I want to order a Shake Falco jersey, like a legit, like Washington Sentinels jersey. They sell them. No, it's on my it's on my to buy list, but there's um, also a bunch but, of Legos uh, on there. Barstool has a shirt with the uh, number sixteen Falco on the back, and in the front it says, uh, "Pain heals, chicks stick scars, glory lasts forever." Oh yeah. I want that as a workout shirt. But one of my favorite scenes also comes before that speech. Um, They're going to go for the extra point. And I believe this is when Nigel just straight up says, like, I can't do it. Oh, yeah. So Nigel has a bit of a gambling problem. Uh, He fucking pissed away all his money. And now the the loan sharks are like, you're going to fucking lose this game. Or we're going to break your legs, and steal your pub. So Falco gets put in the worst predicament ever, and he's kind of like, well, fuck, now I have to save this guy, (laughs) and I'm the fucking holder for the ball. So on on the flash, when they hike that ball, he grabs it, he has it set like if they're gonna kick it, he pulls it out, uh, Nigel goes for the kick, I think he breaks his arm falling down. I thought he broke his leg like when he like No, he broke off. his arm. He broke his arm? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll take that. I think he fell on his arm, broke his arm, and Falco gets a two point conversion. That's right. And uh 
I love the fact that Falco doesn't give him any shit for it. Like, Falco doesn't get yeah. mad at him. Like, what the fuck are you doing? He's just like, hey, Shane, thank you for everything. No problem. Like, I, yeah, like, like he was just good like, dude. He was just like, whatever, man. If I can help you out, I'm going to help you out. Good dude. Um, but, that, yeah, for some reason, that resonated just how, like, forgiving Falco was. But anyway, so we get to the last play. Um, doesn't Shane score and then they have to call it back due to holding or something? Yes, they get a holding call. It's a uh, a big man, uh, sumo, which is the most Dallas Cowboy thing that could ever happen. Oh, we scored! Ah, fuck! Flag on the play. Pull back the touchdown. But this happened in Washington. Dallas is I, the bad team, Eddie. You and I both know what I mean by that. Fucking Dallas Cowboys. Um, but they get a second shot at this play with deaf tight end Brian Murphy going in for the game winning touchdown. As time is expiring. Uh huh. And tell me you're not juiced and jacked like when this like last play is going on. Like I'm standing. Yeah, I mean you're fucking jacked watching it because like everyone loves a feel good uh like a feel good movie. I think too many movies nowadays try to do the twist where like, oh surprise, they lost in the end. But they learned a lesson. It's like, no, sometimes we want to win. Sometimes the good guys need to win. Yeah. Like, I mean, at this point, it, it just, it's a feel good movie. I, I don't remember the final score, though. What was the, do you remember the final score? I think it, it wasn't it 21 to 17 or 20 to 17. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Cause, um, uh, the real life story, the game ends uh, 13 to 7. Redskins upset the Cowboys. And it plays out pretty much the same way. Cowboys are pretty much at full strength playing the replacement player Redskins. <clears throat> and the Redskins pull up the upset. No idea how, but they did. And this was back when they had like Randy White. Like it was a stacked Dallas team. This was, I think, just before they really started working on the dynasty. But I think they had a losing year that year. It was uh, Tom Landry got fired, I think, that year or the year after. No, he got fired in 89. Okay, so it was his last winning season then. I think so. Uh, well, not all the way, goddamn Landry. Um, but yeah, the replacements win, the Sentinels win. And then... Uh, we get like all these beautiful moments of them, like the players with their friends, you know, the, Shane Falco gets the girl, the cheerleader, you know, I all think, this nice stuff. I think the most interesting part is just like how it ends with this uncertainty. Like all these players are just like, well, that could, that could be it. That could be my last game. And that's just how it ends. Like it doesn't end with any like bullshit, uh, like, uh, they uh the this player went on to go play for this team or nothing like it just ends with, I mean that was it. They live this one moment and it's gone. Yeah, there's something bitter, but also something I really like about that because it's realistic. Like yeah, it th that's how it happens. Um, McGinney gives gives the the narrative about you know uh, no endorsement deals for soda pop or shoes, just uh what? Which no one calls it soda pop. What uh, actually, actually, my friends in the north is, do. Yeah, isn't it like Midwestern people that call it pop? Yeah, some belt state people. Oh, we're from Minnesota. We call it pop. We drink a nice cold pop. Shut up with your stupid accent. Damn, Fernie. God, you got personal there. Is something you want to say? We're from Minnesota, don't you know? <laughs> I want to know the story. Or this. that stupid Wisconsin ask it, uh, accent. Oh, I don't know. I always think of making a murderer. I just want to go to WrestleMania. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Jesus, Fernie. Why do you remember the most obscure shit? I don't know. I have a very odd memory because I remember just obscure things, even from my childhood. Do you, do you want to unpack that right now? Nah. Fair. <laughs> um, and then the, the movie ends with them dancing to I Will Survive. Yeah. 
still a great fucking movie, man. Like, all the way through, just a great movie. Yeah, and comparing it to real life, I mean, the real life story is a little bit more sad because uh, the replacement players aren't given jack shit recognition by the team, by anybody. At the time, they couldn't give a shit who these people were. Um, when the Redskins won the Super Bowl, they completely ignored them. They were like, whatever, you won three games, cool deal. And they were just like, that's it. It wasn't until May or March 2018 that the Washington Redskins, the shit we call them Redskins around here, not Commanders. They're the Washington Redskins. Uh, they finally recognized them and gave them Super Bowl rings. The Washington Shitskins? Hey, what you call natives is your own deal, Eddie. Fuck Don't you, bring you. that here. Eat a dick, you know exactly what I mean. You set yourself up for that one. No, I'm not. <laughs> they murdered Denver! 42 to 10, Jesus! Yeah. God damn, that was a thrashing. Wow, okay. Well, all right then. Jeez. Yeah, that was one of John Elway's like three losses in the Super Bowl. Didn't he lose four times? No, he lost three. And won twice. Are you, wasn't he involved in the Fort Falls of Buffalo? No, that was Jim Kelly. Oh, fair enough. Oh, oh that's man. right. He was he was in the USFL, right? Yeah. Kelly. Okay, that's right. Okay. Look, folks, just so we're all clear, Fernie's a big football historian. I think I got wrestling. But Fernie, like, knows everything about football. Yeah, that's true. Um, but, yeah, so great movie ending. Never had a sequel. I was kind of shocked, but kind of happy. I don't think it needed a sequel. I think, like, it didn't need a sequel. Would I have liked one? Sure. But also, I think this movie is great as a standalone. I think so. Like, how do you make a sequel to this? Maybe, I don't know. Falco's a coach? Dude, I, you know what's crazy? I think, I think football movies, and you could call me biased, it's fine, it's whatever. I think football movies are probably one of the most entertaining movies to film. Oh, yeah, because of the crowd. Like, like, you have so much going on. No, I think it's all well that and then also like the the choreography things like that. I think it's a lot better to film those because like let's say you film a basketball movie, if those actors can't play basketball, then you're going to have a fucking hard time playing that mo- doing that movie. Or like even hockey. Like for me, hockey, one my favorite hockey movie is Miracle. Love that movie. It's it's I think that movie got me into hockey when it came out. I've never seen Miracle. What the fuck? I've never seen Miracle. I just started looking up best football movies and I'm like, I've seen a lot of these, but some of them I haven't seen any given Sunday. I've seen Friday What Night the Night. fuck? <laughs> I know that. Hold on, tell me. I know I'm going that. to <laughs> I know the speech from Al Pacino. I know that speech, but like, I okay, don't care if you know that speech. I've seen Rudy. I've seen Remember the Titans. Friday Night Lights. Uh, we are Marshall. I think we are Marshall's overrated. It it that's not even rated, dude. No one really likes that movie. That's right. The number six best football movie ever made by who? Rotten Tomatoes. You're gonna trust Rotten Tomatoes. I just go. I literally just typed into Google best football movies. Fucking the long shot. It, it's a heartwarming story about a school trying to get back to normal after a terrible tragedy. But football movie, nah. Fair. Uh, any given Sunday, Varsity Blues, dude. Varsity Blues was insane. It, Varsity Blues is just fun, but. No, it's not it's, realistic. It's just fun. Varsity Blues was supposed to be Friday Night Lights. What happened? Uh, they couldn't get the rights to it. Oh, so they just made Varsity Blues. They just yeah. called it Varsity Blues. Yeah. Dude, honestly, I kind of hated Varsity I don't want your life. Dude, 
the coach Bud, uh, was it John Vaught? John Voight. John Voight. I'm sorry. Like I hated his guts. Everyone hated him. He did a good job of being a hated coach. But like that felt realistic. The fact that I'm not saying all coaches are like this. You stay out of this, Billy Bob. No, not all coaches are like this. I'll be very clear. But there are coaches. You that- mean psychos that are making you take steroids in the middle of a game? Yes. There are coaches that like use and abuse you, and then second season's over. All right, I'm done with you. Next oh, wait, batch no, of children. Steroids. It was painkillers, but it was quarterall. No, it was a quarterall shot. I don't know. It no, it was worse than that, dude. Because they were just numbing that shit. Fuck. Because <laughs> uh, uh, the quarterback, uh, Paul Walker's character, had like every ligament in his elbow was torn, <laughs> or his leg, his knee. Every like ligament in his knee was torn. They were just numbing that shit up. What's it called? Man, varsity blues. But the thing is, though, and maybe it's because we're here that we can't really relate 100% to it, but it feels realistic in a small town that they would be like this. Like, football is everything. That's the highlight of your life. Once you're done with high school, your life's over. Well, I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard of the story about how Friday Night Lights got made. Uh, Peter Berg, the director... Uh, took them to a Odessa Permian football game, the the executives. Mm-hmm. And, like, pretty much just to, like, show them, like, what they're trying to accomplish, like, with the atmosphere of this movie. And he said, like, by the end of the game, they were on the field. They were, uh, one of the executives was, like, hugging the cheerleaders, like, oh, my God, because like, it was, like, a crazy shootout game. And like the some some of them were like on their hands and knees, just like watching, like going nuts, like because it is such an addicting feeling being a part of those crowds. I mean, we felt it going to the Royal Rumble. You're not wrong. I to be fair, because I don't think you've gone with people that like wrestling as much as you do. No, no. So it was way different. Because me and you were yelling at the top of our lungs, just being dorks. <laughs> you know, but wrong. everyone was being dorks. That's the environment. That's the, yeah. that's, that's where we're at. So like it's uh, that's why I love football movies because like it is just like uh, people being dorks together. Hmm. Do you think it also matters to you a little more because you can relate because you've experienced it? I, that's why I said, like, I could be biased. Like, you could say I'm biased. Um, but I do think from, like, a filming standpoint, I think football movies are probably the easiest sport to film. Because you have helmets. You can easily have a stunt double in there. Like, it's. I think football movies are a little bit easier to film as opposed to, um, like, soccer or basketball or baseball. Because if you're not good at those sports... They're gonna have to go to these weird cuts and things like that. Yeah. Well, fair enough, man. You got you have a fair point. Um and I think with that, do you want to go into final thoughts to this movie? Sure. Uh for me, final thoughts. This is definitely one of the best sports movies, not just football movies. I think sports movies. Um, even though it never got the love it deserved when it first came out, I think this movie became a cult classic because I mean, that was just a special thing about uh, the 2000s to like 20 early 2010s was that, yeah, maybe a movie didn't make its budget at the movie theater, but if it got on DVD and word of mouth, it made its budget. You're not wrong. Like there was always that, okay, we didn't make it at the movie theater. But if we can get a strong rental market, rental market, fuck, that's not even a thing anymore. <laughs> like no one thinks about, oh man, I hope we make our money back on Redbox. No, not like man. no, like if a movie can make its budget at a blockbuster or the mom and pop video stores, they were like, fuck yeah, it's a because it was possible. I forgot a lot of movies. Like had sequels done because of the popularity of them being on rental. Yeah, like, that, that's one of the way the Hocus Pocus actually got huge. Uh, I remember when I was doing research for that movie, 
Dude, the rentals for it were fucking nuts, and the DVD, the yeah. VHS sales were nuts. Yeah, rental markets were a thing. Like, if a movie can make it big at Blockbuster or the mom and pop stores, like that's how you made money. Golden. Like uh, Grandma's Boy. Grandma's Boy was Oh my god, dude. That one I think is definitely one of the top 10 rental like miracles because I don't think it made its budget in theaters. Fuck no. But when it went to DVD and rental, it shot to the top because of that money. Dude, I forgot about Grandma's Boy. I love Grandma's Boy. That's my favorite movie. Oh, I fucking love this girl. Oh, my God. I just remember the, the grandma whooping the other guy's ass at the very end to prove that it's his game. It's oh. so cold when you're dead. Oh, fuck, Sophie. I'm sorry. I would have saved you <laughs> if I was here, Sophie. I'm so sorry. Please don't kill me. Gotcha. Oh, fuck, Grandma. What the fuck? Oh my god! I but yeah, this. I'm pretty sure this movie had a strong rental, uh, following. Like, I think this movie did. Well, also, I think people like you and me, our age, like look back at it with fond memories. Like, it's it's just a stupid fun movie. It's like a Night's Tale. Oh yeah, it, if you find your audience, people are gonna like it. Yeah. Um, what would you rate this one? For me, this movie. Uh, I, I'd give it, fuck dude, I'd give it four and a half. It's just so rewatchable. Like you're able to just sit down. It's one of the, it's a good background noise movie. Yeah. Because here's a, here's a fucking category. It's a good cable movie because it could just be on (laughs) and you could be like, oh, it's this part. Yeah. Fuck it. I'll watch the rest of the movie. (laughs) <laughs> you're right it, it's one of those movies that uh kids if you kids you don't know uh we had something called cable and it, you yeah. had like if you were lucky 70 channels if you were lucky and you could flick through them to try and watch something that you like um and, a and cable this movie, movie was on like tnt or tbs and you could pretty much watch it at any point and you wouldn't be dissatisfied you know, you want to hear something nuts? For as long as I saw this movie, I never saw the beginning of this film for like a really long time. I'm remembering now, I did see it on cable earlier than five years ago. I probably watched it like in 2010, but I never saw the beginning. I always started watching it right when the harassing Falco is struck. Oh, yeah. So you missed like the part where he's underwater throwing a football? Yeah. It's his own football, by the way. Did you notice that? Yeah. It's from his trophy. Yeah, I was like, son of a bitch, why do you keep it? But all right. Like, way to fucking litter the ocean, asshole. <laughs> way to get rid of some memorabilia, you piece of shit. Wait, hey, did he win the Heisman? Dick. Huh? Did he win the Heisman? I don't think it was a Heisman. I think it was a finalist, but uh, it wasn't the Heisman because that's not the Heisman trophy. Mm, fair. Um, the Heisman trophy is the fucking dude running. Oh, it's the stiff arm guy, right? Yeah. Mm, okay, about that. Okay. What would you rate this movie? Because you're the one that's like, a. for some fucking reason, you don't watch these movies or never have. A. A. Fucking A. Like, this, like a great movie that I probably rewatch it once or twice a year. Like, randomly. I think the rewatchability just puts it in that fucking A category. Well, because, like, dude, the comedy hits. Like, it's never mean-spirited. It's just funny. Like, it, it's yeah. funny. There's not really a lot of... Uh... Uh, what's it called? Questionable comedy in this in this movie. Like you know the comedy where you have to be like, oh, "Come on, dude! It was the two thousands. It was Wild West." <laughs> yeah, no, it's not one of those. Thankfully, you have to explain nothing to nobody. Like uh, like Hangover, oh, <laughs> that God. opening scene where they pick up the the friend, <laughs> no. aging doctor, somebody. Well, what do you call him? I don't know. I think I I can't remember the word. <laughs> It sounds like you said somebody. What, what, what was the word, Freddie? I on, think he said somebody. No, nah, no, nah, that's not that, Freddie. Oh, remember. you're sure about it. What did he say then? No, nah, you know he said something else. No, I don't know. It's, it looks <laughs> like you know what he says. 
Is that paging doctor? What was his name? John? Paging Dr. John. Oh, well, yeah. well I guess he paged Dr. John. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I had no workaround about that at all. Um, but yeah. We should fucking do any given Sunday. You want to do that one next? Yes. Fuck it. Any given Sunday, we'll do that one next. Uh, this is going to be our Super Bowl episode. We'll do XFL episode any given Sunday. Yeah. Done. We'll do it any given Sunday because for me, it's definitely over the top, but it's not too far off of like what the NFL is as a business. What's it called? Um, I wonder if the if real like professional football players ever watch these movies and they're just like, I wish it was like that. Oh, I'm but- sure. Like, I'm oh. sure it's like that. I'm pretty sure boxers watch fighting movies and like that wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> he he was dropping his arms. He he's not like doing this or that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that everyone will watch every fighter watch Rocky and was like, This is really dumb. Why is he just letting him beat the shit out of him? He's concussed. Stop like, the fight. His, why are his hands down? <laughs> Cut me, man. Cut me. I don't think that's how that works. Or why did Rocky come back from Rocky Four? He came back to America, and his son suddenly aged five years, and he can draw, and he could draw boobs. That that was I was like, what the fuck? Okay, I guess. He's, he's hey, what is it? We got we got him over here drawing boobs. Oh, What's God. he doing? Is he whacking his arms? Is he doing that to the boobs? Ugh. Oh shit, Creed's coming out. I forgot about that. Yep, Creed 3. Dude, John the Major's gonna beat the shit out of Ant Man and Creed in the same like three weeks. I hope it's good. Creed 3? I hope it is. I think so. I think it'll be great. I'm just, I'm just hoping that Don gets his ass whooped in the fucking Rocky's actually training uh his ex buddy. What the fuck? I thought Rocky was out of this. <laughs> I trained him because the only way you're going to get better is if you overcome something bigger than yourself. Me. <laughs> oh, God. I would want to fight Jonathan Majors. I don't know if you want to. I fucking don't. Fuck no, dude. He looks jacked as shit. Dude. Oh, my God. And, and imagine poor, at poor Paul Rudd getting the shit beat out of him. Oh, yeah. Hey, I don't have to win. I just have to make sure you lose. Yeah. That's a, that's a legit quote, though. That's a quote yeah. I want on a shirt somewhere. Ah. It's, it's the old, I don't have to be faster than the bear. I just have to be faster than you. <laughs> oh, man. I really, okay. Like, I, I know. Review Let, is supposed to be over. Let's end this movie. Let's end this review. All right. Real quick question. Do you think Adman's going to die in the movie, or do you think he's going to, like, continue on? I don't know, dude. It could, he could die. That is a big possibility. Ah, uh, no. I think he'll die in an Avengers film. We'll see. I'll be pissed if he dies in the movie. But all right, all right. we're gonna wrap up this the pod. All right. Thanks for listening to this podcast, everybody. This is your review for the replacements. This was Fernando. I've been Eddie. And let's cut this.